how do we get the body of Christ into an Ephesians 4 model? That transformation coupled with, I've been talking about having an aim lately, and that aim is the ideal that you should aim for, the, the ideal that you should have in mind that you should strive for. Somebody recently said that an ideal in your life is a, an infinitely renewable resource of identity construction. And I thought that was a great way to word that. Um, so we're looking at the transformation, what to do, and it can be it can be hazy or foggy to say, what is it? I'm looking at Romans 12 too, that word transform in Romans 12 too. What I'm looking at is what can I aim for to behave like that is something that is right. And one thing you want to be able to do when you transform into something And when I talk about this, I am by no means claiming to have achieved anything or be transformed. I just want to clear that up um, right away. So it's not like that at all. What I'm saying is that each one of us, no matter how much you've changed anyway, there's always still some change to go. I mean, none of us are in the image of Christ yet, right? So we... Of this transformation, there there is a practical transformation. And one thing you could think of it as is as you want to behave in the most appropriate manner for the highest versatility of circumstances in which you could find yourself. So uh, versatility of appropriate behavior, if you will, across as many circumstances as possible. And, and that would include sometimes making the right choice. Some circumstances require you to sit and be quiet and just not do anything. And then some circumstances require you to act. And the best transformation you can have is to where when you know exactly what to do and why and what your role is and what you should aim for and when you should lead the charge and when you should fall behind somebody else who's leading the charge, you got to make those decisions. You got to use discernment. And when you hear information, how do you separate the signal from the noise and strive for what is good? An example of this, and I'll, and this is a great example because it is not a religious example. It is secular on purpose because if I were to use a religious example, the there would be propositional truth or faith variance with a religious example of things that some of you in the audience don't claim to believe. Well, I don't believe that, you know, and you'd, you'd, you would take issue with it. So we, what I'm doing is a movie review of the movie. It, it, it's not a movie review. It's a character study of the, of the character, of the main character in the movie World War Z. <laughs> it sounds crazy because, you know, people think, well, that's a zombie movie. And, 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 I would make the argument, and this is what I said to the people in my circles recently, I don't think it's a zombie movie at all. I think this is a, this is a character study of somebody who acts more or less appropriately in the worst possible scenario you could put a person in. And now we're in a, a scenario that's similar to this. Not similar to this in a way, but if you were to take, I mean, the, the quarantine situation that we're in because of COVID-19, if you were to ratchet it up a thousand percent, that would be a zombie apocalypse. And it wouldn't be a zombie apocalypse like The Walking Dead. I saw a meme recently where this girl is praying, Lord, if we have a zombie apocalypse, please make them like the zombies on The Walking Dead and not the ones on World War Z. Because <laughs> in World War Z, they they run at full speed, very tenaciously, and they bite you and you transform. By the time we're seeing the main character, it is up to within 12 seconds of being bitten. Okay, So imagine how fast something like that would, spe- would spread with somebody spreading it with as much tenacity as they could possibly garner for themselves. It's pretty frightening. Now, But the main thing is, I think that that is just a backdrop. And what we have is an emergence of this character who is called upon to act in this scenario. And you can follow him and you can see, you can see how he acts more or less appropriately in, some, in unpredictable ways, in very good ways, in some su- sometimes surprising ways that make you think. And I think that this is a good idea if, as a Christian, if I have an aim, I want to transform into something. This is an idea of the kind of circumstances 
that you would want to transform to be able to do. Now, if you could take, if you could abstract those into maybe it's not these particular scenarios, but something else, and then pull out an, a spiritual equivalent for that. So as we move forward, I want to say that this this is not an endorsement of any movie or of Hollywood in general. World War Z is not just a zombie movie. It's a case study of how aptly transformed person uh, possess of how an aptly transformed person who possesses all four types of knowing, which I'll show you in a second, can behave appropriately amid an ultimate Kairos situation. We'll talk about what that word means in a second, too. The decision points, adaptive TTPs, attitude, and agency of the main character are illustrative of Romans 12-2 transformation, of the Romans 12-2 transformation, and of the faith discussed in the latter segments of our video on the coronavirus that we had a couple weeks ago. So, narratives... Any kind of narrative can serve as a type of mythopoetic data compression which can retain and convey information in a way that is memorable, inexhaustible, and timeless. Okay? What that means is I could give you a, if I gave you a thousand facts that you need to know or doctrines you need to learn, whatever, you probably would not remember all thousand moral you know, all thousand facts or things you need to know, moral points, right? But if I tell you a story, okay? That story is memorable. If it's a good story, it's inexhaustible, which means you can always pull more truth out of it. You can get all thousand truths out of that story. The the morals of the story, if you will, will be, you know, thousands of truths. And it's timeless, okay? It, It works across all segments of time. And that's one of the things about the Bible. One of the reasons it's lasted so long is because the narratives in there are, they, they fit this um, criteria. They're memorable, they're inexhaustible, and they're timeless. Okay, you can, you can keep getting information out of them that you can use. Uh, 